Good morning, madam. Are we good to go? Uh, madam, you are on mute currently. Hello, sir. Am I audible? Yes, 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 madam. Yes, madam. Are we good to go? Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, please. Respected dignitaries, delegates, faculty members, and my dear participants, a very good morning to all of you. Breakthroughs in the field of science and technology have a deep impact on development. But balancing this development with the long-term resource viability is a practical challenge and needs wise stewardship. In order to blend the thought process of young minds with the current trend of innovations leading to sustainability, Atmia University has organized EVACAN, a national level seminar on the topic, the role of science and technology in sustainable development. Before beginning today's program, let us first seek the Almighty's blessings, for he is the ultimate source of all positive energy, creativity, and talent. Please join me to offer prayers in the lotus feet of the divine. to request Dr. Didi Vyas, in charge team, in charge register and team uh, transformative academics to deliver the welcome address. So. Thank you. Am I audible? Yes. Yes, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Jay uh, Swami Narayan, omnipresent His Divine Holiness, Parampuji Hari Prasad Swamiji Maharaj, 
our mentor and president of atme university param pujya tyag swami ji maharaj respected vice chancellor of atme university dr shiv tripathi sir invited speakers of this national seminar top dr vipin kumar ji chief innovation officer at national innovation foundation india and dr kabir udeshi ji founder flycatcher technologies head of the department colleagues dear students and participants from within and outside atme university namaskar and good morning to one and all present on behalf of atme university i welcome you all to the university and to this yogidam gurukul campus and also to this national seminar which is part of the national level symposium abhignan 2022 abhignan is a annual national level science and technology festival that is celebrated at university every year the event marks the celebration of national science day which we all know is in recognition of discovery of raman effect by our indian physicist dr uh, shri c v raman in 1928 for which he was awarded the uh, the nobel prize in physics this year abhignan 2022 is a two day two day event which is organized on 27th and 28th of this month and this year we are also fortunate to host as a part of abhignan 2022 17th iste state annual students convention uh with this program i am glad to know from the coordinators that we have received a huge response in terms of participation of more than 1000 plus students in this event abhignan 2022 in total includes 14 different events some of which are in offline mode some of it are in online mode and we are witnessing students participating in all these events with great enthusiasm since yesterday this national seminar which we call e vyakhyan is one of the most short after event of abhigna in this e vyakhyan we invite experts and recognized scholars to share their experiences with students so that students can appropriately appropriately get guided in deciding the trajectory of career as well as learning path this year the theme of national science day is integrated approach in science and technology for sustainable future which is again very close to the core value of the university which is value based education for harmonized living Atme University is one among very few educational institutions who have courses on universal human values, sustainable development goals, etc., integrated in its mainstream curriculum, and promotes this in all activities, whether it is research or outreach activities. With these words, once again, I welcome you all. I thank both the speakers. of this national seminar for accepting our invitation and joining us congratulations to the coordinating team for arranging this and wish all the participants very best from this event and from this national seminar thank you thank you very much thank you sir for your warm welcome mahatma gandhi once said even a single lamp dispels the deepest darkness Let us commence officially today's program by lighting the lamp and by seeking the blessings of our Lord Swami Narayan and His Divine Holiness Param Pujya Hari Prasad Swami Ji. I request all the dignitaries, delegates, faculty members, and participants to be virtually present during the lighting of the lamp.
I request Dr. Devashish Bennett from the Department of Biotechnology to introduce our first speaker of the day, Dr. Vipin Kumar. Thank you, ma'am. We are extremely pleased and honored today to have the august presence of Dr. Vipin Kumar, Director and Chief Innovation Officer at National Innovation Foundation, NIF India, among us. Dr. Vipin Kumar is known for his work on incubation and promotion of inclusive and frugal innovations by way of value addition, intellectual property, protection, business development, commercialization, and developing open source technologies for generation of employment opportunities for many. He incubated several innovative technologies which made their way to the domestic and international market. He has also worked as a resource person in UNESCO's course on grassroots innovation management and workshops of policymakers researchers to develop the roadmap for innovation, incubation, and promotion in the Asia Pacific region. The Festival of Innovation and Entrepreneurship, in short, known as FINE, an annual national flagship event jointly organized by NIF and DST under the aegis of the President's House in India and Inspire Awards Manak, which motivate millions of school children to pursue science and research are among his most found work areas in relation to India's innovation and entrepreneurship ecosystem. He is also instrumental in building social and inclusive innovation-based relationship India and Asian states. He has even served as the chairman. You have to unmute yourself. <clears throat> really, uh, sorry for this interruption. Okay. Uh, okay. So uh, I will just go once again. We are extremely pleased and honored today to have the August presence of Dr. Vipin Kumar, Director and Chief Innovation Officer at National Innovation Foundation, NIF India, among us. Dr. Vipin Kumar is known for his work on incubation and promotion of inclusive and frugal innovations by the way of value additions, intellectual property, protection, business development, commercialization, and developing open source technologies for generation of employment opportunities for many. He incubated several innovative technologies which made their way to the domestic and international market. He has also worked as a resource person in UNESCO's course on grassroots innovation management and workshops of policymakers, researchers to develop the roadmap for innovation, incubation, and promotion in the Asia Pacific region. The Festival of Innovation and Entrepreneurship, in short, known as Fine, an annual national flagship event jointly organized by NIF and DST under the aegis of President's House in India and Inspire Awards Manak, which motivate millions of school students to pursue science and research, are among his most profound work areas in relation to India's innovation and entrepreneurship ecosystem. He is also instrumental in building social and inclusive innovation-based relationship between India's and Asian member states. He has even served as the chairperson of various committees of the union and state governments, as well as the governing board executive committee member of various prestigious institutions and helped in coordination of the National Entrepreneurship Awards, NEA, of Ministry of Skill Development and Entrepreneurships, MSDE, Government of India as a lead partner. In over two decades of his career, 
His leadership continues to motivate common people to deliver innovative technologies to solve societal problems and generate stories of social transformation, which makes the country very proud. I now like to call upon the respected keynote speaker of today, Dr. Vipin Kumar, to kindly deliver the keynote address of today's event. The title of his talk is Institution Innovation Connects for Addressing the Socio-Economic Challenges of Nations. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, please uh, allow me to share my presentation. Yeah, now it is there. Yes, sir. So I'm thankful to Atmiya University for giving me this uh, opportunity to share my views with this uh, August audience. I understand that today hundreds of students are there and it is always motivating discussing and talking to the students. And the reason is very simple because whenever I go, I interact with the students, I find one thing that uh, the young generation today is impatient. They don't want to live with the problem like our generation. Rather, they want to be the part of the solution. And that's why they are doing lots of innovations. And those innovations can be for the development of our nation. And you know that there are, at this time, many programs are there in the country, which is to support the creativity of any individual. I'll share in my presentation also. There are lots of, uh, uh, you know, initiative of the government and in the new education policy, it is very clear that no idea should remain unattended. It should be nurtured in Department of Science and Technology under various schemes, which try to make it more, uh, you know, uh, more simple and uh, friendly to the students. There is no rigid, uh, you know, kind of policies at this time, in fact, and because of that, uh, large number of incubators are set up based on the ideas of the students. Uh, let me share my... Is my screen visible to you all? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. okay so my, my presentation is there. Okay, fine. So my topic as uh, Professor Vyas mentioned that it is Institution Innovation Connects for addressing the socio-economic challenges of the nation. So before moving ahead, we have to understand that uh, what are the top, uh, you know, 10 or top 15 global challenges in general. There was a study, in fact, by American Council of uh, for United Nations University under this Millennium Project. And they have, uh, you know, identified all the problems, in fact, of the decade from 2011 to 2020. And then this report came to uh, the public. Uh, if you see here, in fact, uh, the social problems are there after number nine. Social and technological issues are there. But on the top, if you will see that the sustainable development and climate change, at this time, people are not concerned about the big weapons. People are not concerned about the IT. People are not concerned, much concerned about uh, other issues. At this time, the most, uh, uh, you know, uh, important challenge in the globe at the globe is the sustainable development and the climate change second is the clean water population resources uh, you know you see here health is on number two uh, number eight might be in fact in last uh, two years it has moved from uh, you know eight to six but not still it is not at the at the top in fact so we have to understand in fact and after nine you see this education, the peace and conflict, the status of women, energy, science and technology, global ethics, 
I'm happy to get that the global ethics is also the concern of the people. And here in the educational institutions, when we are going to set up the incubation companies, ethics has to be there on the top. In fact, without ethics, you cannot find your survival. Now let me move ahead. In fact, what are the top five global risks in terms of likelihood? In terms of likelihood, you see here, in fact, income disparity, financial imbalance, unemployment, water crisis, population aging, involuntary migration. There are the risk at, uh, you know, in likelihood. But if you see the risk in terms of, uh, sorry, in terms of impact, few things are common. Financial crisis is still common. Unemployment is still common. Water crisis is common. But here, the two additions are there, the food crisis and the infectious diseases. In fact, and in, after pandemic, these infectious diseases have become more important. So now you can understand that what are the top eight socio-economical challenges of the world. The top four in terms of high likelihood and high impact are involuntary migration, financial crisis, failures or imbalance, unemployment and the water crisis. If you see the high likelihood and low impact, population aging, income disparity, but high lower likelihood and high impact, the infectious diseases and the food crisis. So here, it is not that all the challenges are, uh, you know, the same in all the countries. You take the example of China, US, India, and Japan. Obviously, the infectious diseases are the common challenges for all the four countries. But the financial crisis at this time is not the issue of China. But for US, India, and Japan, it is the, still the problem in India, income disparity. You know, our biggest problem is the in, in income disparity. It is not that we do not have the rich people, but likewise, we do have the large number of poor people, in fact, and this income disparity is the biggest problem. And it is the responsibility of younger generation to think about it and to try to fill this gap, uh, you know, somewhere. In Japan, Japan has another problem, in fact, the population aging, you know. So the people are, India, you say that it's a young country, but Japan is an old country, in fact, the gray, uh, you know, state, but you see that the challenge for one country can be the opportunity for another country. Like the population aging in, in Japan is there, which is their challenge. But might be it is an opportunity for India. Because India is a young country, in fact, and large number of populations are under, uh, you know, the age of 30. And definitely they can find opportunities in that country. So before moving ahead, before doing anything, in fact, we have to understand these dynamics and how institutions, how institutions can, uh, you know, share this, uh, how institutions can help, in fact, in addressing those kind of institutions. So, you know, institutions are there, innovations are there, they embrace each other, in fact, to address the socio-economic after this pen i am not moving my okay yeah so let me give, uh, many of you must have heard about this program, the book of this is Scott Galloway, The Four. You know, if not, my sincere advice is please read this book. It's the story of these four IT gained, Facebook, Google, Amazon, and Apple. And you will find it very easily, in fact, that in terms of high technology, uh, you know, imports, these are also 
dependent on other country. I was saying that there might be a challenge for one country. Likewise, there can be the challenge for one institution or one company, which can be the opportunity for others. At this time, in fact, these four big IT gain, yet for them, India offer IT and IT enabled services and China offer the manufacturing support. These four countries are the, you know, the, these four, uh, you know, uh, companies, the, these IT companies are the major, you know, the companies of USA. If you see that uh, US, uh, there and they, these, these companies are contributing to at least one fourth of the total GDP of uh, USA, in fact, uh, even though they are not self-sufficient. They are getting the help of an, uh, India, and India also needs the help of these people because we do have people, large number of people, in fact, and they want good employment, uh, and they are skillful people. That's why India offer IT and IT enabled services to these four companies, and China offer the manufacturing support to these people. See, if this collaboration is not there, then probably these companies could not be at the level where they are today, actually. So the networking is required. And how, uh, you know, if you see the journey of these, uh, you know, some of the example, let me share, in fact, how institutions have helped, in fact, making these uh, IT companies as IT can't. Facebook, in 2003, started as FaceMass. In fact, uh, he was at this time, in fact, uh, tried to put uh, uh, the, you know, the brief CVs, in fact, uh, the interests, uh, the photographs, uh, the education qualifications of, uh, uh, you know, the all, all, all the clicks of his base, in fact, uh, and try to put on, on, on one platform and developed it as a face bag, face, face uh, mess. But in 2014, with the support of Harvard University, he converted into the Facebook. And what Harvard University did? In fact, the university has given the platform and they asked that you are doing wonderful work, in fact, and people are getting interest in this. Why not you put the profile of each and every, uh, you know, the students and faculties of Harvard University at, at one place? They got the money, in fact, some, some, some money, in fact, uh, uh, but that was very minimal money. And uh, in April 2004, in the same year, the Facebook company was registered because of the interest of the people. You have to do the good work. But at the same time, you have to get the platform. And in June 2004, you know, 500,000 US dollar venture capital investment was received in Facebook. And the recipe of Facebook will not put any data. We'll just give you the platform. You have to put, put your information. You have to put your interest. You have to put your photographs. You have to put your education. You have to put every information. And the information will be accessed by others. So this concept was definitely a popular concept. But you know the support provided by Harvard University made it the Facebook com you know and in 2004 itself there were 1 million users there were 1 user millions uh, 1 million users and rest is the history and today the market cap for this company is more than 600 billion us dollar 600 billion us dollar you know in india there is no company in fact of uh, this size let me give another study of uh, another example of uh, uh, the Google. You know, like uh, you are the students and uh, you get uh, some, uh, you know, the work for your PG or UG digitization program. Likewise, in 1996, Larry Pace and uh, Sergey Brin were working on research projects. They were living in the, ho you know, the hostel dormitory, in fact. And they were assigned a problem of 
एक्सप्लोरिंग मैथमेटिकल प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ द डब्ल्यू 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 वर्ल्ड वाइड वेब अंडरस्टैंडिंग इट्स लिंक स्ट्रक्चर एंड द प्रॉब्लम स्टेटमेंट वॉज टू फाइंड आउट विच वेब पेज लिंक टू ए गिवन पेज सिंपल so that simple thing in fact they found but when they were doing that study when they were trying to dig out the information the idea came to their mind why not a search engine you know and that was the found the the idea of uh, this uh, google search engine what uh, risk the institution like stanford has taken originally the google was hosted on stanford's website this search engine now it is any student if they want to do certain work you know university do not want to take uh, the risk in ma majority of the cases they say no okay we'll get the bad bad, bad name uh, no it is not that you come out uh, uh, you know with a good proposal you come out with a good technology then we'll support you but supporting at the right stage in fact at initial stage become more important and the google.stanford.edu has given them the confidence and today you understand that the market cap of this company 1.77 trillion you know indian india's economy is 2.65 trillion but this company in fact google itself is 1.77 trillion can you imagine how big they, those, those companies are there and in 1998 just in two years google had an index of 60 million pages just in two years in 60 million pages now a question in fact to all the students many time you go to an institution you interact with the students uh, you see that we want to become the leader but my simple question is just to see that how many pages you have downloaded in last 6 uh, month and how many pages you have uploaded if you have downloaded more it means you are following others if you have uploaded more and others are following you then only you can be able to claim that you are the leader so it is not leadership is not just a word in fact it is okay we are the leader in this area we are the, how many people are following you next next question is how many people are following you so if nobody is following you you cannot claim that you are a leader but you have to change this ratio many of our students they are good in downloading the content but they are not good in uploading the content we have to upload more in fact it is our moral responsibility it is our ethical responsibility it is our professional responsibility to increase the open source domain of the knowledge you know it is it is required so in india it is not that such uh, startups are there outside india in india also at this time there are 80 three unicorns you know the unicorn is one which is having market cap of uh, 1 billion us dollar the startups in fact like started in the hostels of different universities the the students uh, they were incubated by the technology business incubators you know 83 till today as on january 14 2022 we had 83 unicorn and around 75 uh, unicorns have uh, you know issued the ipos and they have raised 89066 crore 89066 crore rupees were raised through ipos issued in april to november 2021 just in less than one year actually in just in less than one year they have raised this much money in fact india has a record number of startups 44 out of these 83 44 has reached to the unicorn status in 2021 only so here i hope that by the end of 
2022, I'm expecting that at least the 200 unicorn companies has to be there. It is encouraging. It is encouraging for all of us. In fact, because our track is good, we are among the top three, uh, you know, startup uh, um, um, nations. In fact, but our gap with in with China and our gap with uh, uh, US is is huge. But I'm seeing some hope here. In fact, the success of many startup companies, you know. Um, I did not dis discuss that uh, there were some turbulent phase and many startup companies either they have closed down or many of have changed their businesses. But here yours, I'm seeing the success story is in fact. And there are at this time 16,400 startup companies, uh, you know, as on 10th January 2022. And I'm happy to share that 46% of them have at least one woman director. It's another, you know, the positive statement. 46% of startup companies are having at least one woman director. That is also a, a good uh, sign for Indian startups. So, and these startups, are not located in just in metros. Obviously, you know, more startups will be there in the metros, but definitely at least in 555 districts, at least one startup companies are there. In 555 districts, so you go to the rural areas, you go to the, uh, you know, um, uh, tribal areas, you will find that some people are finding their work fascinating and they're, they have set up startups in their, their areas, in fact. And, uh, you know, uh, there was a report and the report was good that government has to be the buyer, in fact, if you want to inculcate the culture of the startup in the country. And in our country, the same, uh, you know, the facility was provided by the, and the jam, government marketplace, government marketplace on which you can buy your products to the government, to the government institutions, to the government departments, you know, that was uh, the decision the country has taken. And at this time, 11,386 startups are on board on the jam. And with 93,908 orders, they have received from the government. I'm not saying that uh, they did the business of uh, 4,000 crore with government. So I'm not saying that these companies uh, should only work with the government, in fact. And I'm not also saying that this is a appreciable data. I hope that few lakh crore business in future they will do uh, with the government itself, in fact, that uh, uh, support these startup companies are getting. So this is, if you see that in 2016-17, how India was there, in fact, you see that uh, only few startup companies, but in 21-22, you are seeing that entire state is, whether it is a Jammu Kashmir, whether it is uh, Northeast, whether it is, uh, you know, South, West, North, everywhere, that is startup culture is there. Our country has become yellow. In fact, you are, you, you are seeing here, in fact. So that is the change we brought in last few years. At least our startup culture is growing and it is not only, uh, you know, uh, people are selling their products. You see that who are the startup companies, in fact. The startup companies are based on the innovations, you know. It is not just uh, you are make, selling honey and you are the startup company. Any new company is not a startup company. In startup companies are those which are based on the innovative ideas, in fact. And mostly set up by the students uh, under the technology business incubators, in fact, and they got the status of this, uh, you know, the, the startup. And in five years itself, uh, uh, you know, these startup companies has generated the employment also. You know, this figure I got, 5,96,000, sustainable employment, direct employment. I'm not talking about the indirect employment. The direct employment these companies have generated to the public, in fact. So, it is a good thing.
it is a good thing in fact and it has become possible when the students like you you know thought to not go and seek the job rather you thought to become the job provider and you have decided to set up your own companies based on the ideas which was there in your mind actually and as a result you are seeing here in fact in global in global innovation index uh, in 2015 you know the discussion was there that india is uh, such a large uh, pool of students the such la large pool of uh, laboratories uh, the people the individuals are also doing innovations but why we are not at the respectable position we were there at uh, 81 position in 2015 but you know because of the efforts of institutions and the government i would say is government is also an institution in fact so by the support of uh, government and the local institutions you see that every year india's condition is improving in global innovation index and today in 2021 we have reached at 45 points at least we are in the top 50 um you know innovative countries i'm not happy with this figure also i'm hoping that in years to come we would be among the top 10 innovative countries and for that you have to do further analysis in fact we have done the the analysis in fact where we are doing good where we are at average and where we have to improve you know so overall rank is 44 rank is 45 but if you see we are among the top 30 in market sophistication and knowledge and technology output in business sophistication human capital and research in institutions we are you know between 50 to 60 but in creative output and infrastructure so we have to give more emphasis at this time on the creative output and the infrastructure then our position overall position in global in innovation index will will rise in nif uh, we are doing lots of activities uh, you know to promote the innovative culture and we are nurturing the creativity of the common people the people who are uh, not much educated but they used uh, you know some limited resources and given the solution to themselves their communities in fact they basically try to solve the persistent problem in fact and we call them the grassroots innovators and many of those innovators have uh, uh, you know become the startup companies in fact uh, there are 22 startup 22 grassroots innovators whose companies are already set up and 101 total including these 22 are there in the pipeline in fact uh, you know uh, up, approximately 100 companies are there in the pipeline see this slide i kept for you in fact uh, the theranos uh, case study and many of our startup companies or many of our companies commit the same mistake in fact what this company did they did a fraud actually it was a blood testing startup pitching a revo for a revolutionary revo revolutionary technologies which was flying very high in fact they said that with a single pin prick of blood they would be able to do 400 240 tests okay what they claimed in fact it was not correct in fact so they lied to the company board the culture of intimidation and secrecy came and technology that repeatedly failed quality assurance and cruciality results sent to the real patient which were fundamentally incorrect upon the life changing medicinal deci medical decisions were taken to made upon it was not right and the result is the founder the almost the founder of this company was sent behind the bar for 20 years but this is not important the important is the lesson here in fact and the five lessons we have to take with this uh, company one we have to focus on the business not on putting a show 
many of us commit the same mistake we try to make a show in fact okay but we have to we have, can be only sustainable when we have to put our emphasis more on the business question the technology definitely we have to the the uh, you know stakeholders have all right to question the technologies and we, it is our responsibility to provide the answer rather we should take it an opportunity you know management is one thing but not the most important thing third don't change the unicorn when we set up one company 61000 uh, you know startup companies are there unicorns are 83 if we'll chase those unicorns and we would try to become the unicorn fast we will commit the mistake on the way fourth invest in the things that they can understand it is for venture capitalist venture capitalist please invest in the things which you can understand properly and for the companies approach to the venture firms with care you have to see is their investment philosophy matching they do have certain philosophies might be that philosophy is not matching and tomorrow you will face problem out of it so these are the you know the outcome of this uh, you know the, the this startup failure here actually and i have uh, is a complete value change my institution it is start from scouting of innovation adding value ip protection business development dissemination uh dissemination both social and commercial commercial dissemination and i'll share that what changes we are bringing in fact we are working for the grassroots people we are working for the school students we do have the biggest program for school students inspire awards manak in fact uh, under which we are getting one 10 lakh ideas every year from 5 lakh schools of the country and in which we have a provision to support financially to one lakh ideas you know we give a support of 10000 to one lakh ideas you just imagine that one lakh into 10000 is 100 crore 100 crore has gone then the key move ahead actually this 10000 to these one lakh students are so that they could be able to convert their ideas into model or proof of concept then they will go to district level exhibition the state level exhibition and finally they will uh, <coughs> go to the national level at national level will again select 1000 out of them and will give a further support of 50000 each plus the mentoring support to, to all the students and 60 out of them will be awarded and incubated completely it is not just award it is the incubation also and that's why you are seeing that lots of technologies of school students are there in the market one girl in fact she she developed a, she has given the idea of uh, the leg adjustable walker and this is now the biggest company visco is selling that product elimco is selling that product and this uh, girl is getting royalty out of it another person sikanto mendal in fact developed a special picker and the cart and many municipal corporations are using so in nif we are doing in fact lots of uh, you know to give them the platform lots of things and recently we signed the agreement with uh, MO, uh, amazon and this mou was not just to sell their products this mou was more on to build the capacity of uh, the startup companies if any of you want to be the entrepreneur if you want to be the startup company and for capacity building you want to join our meetings in fact time to time different workshops with the amazon people are there please let me know in fact we would be very happy to uh, you know include you in those workshops so, so we sign mou also uh for celebrating the stories like amazon prime is also a platform and we want that certain stories you know what if stories uh, you know should also be there on amazon prime in terms of in in the form of the films in fact so many time we share technology transfer is also there in fact so nif is you know by all way 
are willing to take the technology to the market. And this is the first technology, in fact, with John Deere company. It's the biggest tractor manufacturing company in the world. And they have taken the first uh, technology from outside their R&D from us, in fact. You know, what is the technology? It's a tractor operated paddy transplanter. It's a tractor operated paddy transplanter, which we have developed based on the knowledge of the person and very good amount of those innovators have received and they will get the reality. We, we, we facilitated this uh, tech, tech transfer. This I already shared about the school students' innovations. You know, many other technologies we are, we are getting, in fact. So what we did, in fact, there should be the fate of every technology. And we put many technologies on our on one portal innovation portal, which was uh, launched by our former Minister of Science and Technology, uh, you know, on 14 January 2021, then Minister was Dr. Harshwardhan. And uh, this 1.1 lakh technologies were dedicated to the nation, in fact, and after that, uh, um, I'm happy that many ministries put this uh, portal on their website also, the link of this portal. Um, AICT has sent the letters to, you know, large number of um, uh, engineering institutions and technological institutions, and they ask the students to take the technology from here for their PG and UG dissertation program. And the similar as I'm doing it here. In fact, if a student want to take, it is open. You can, uh, you know, go through the database and uh, can select the technology for your UG and PG dissertation. This uh, festival of innovation and entrepreneurship, it is uh, very close to my heart, in fact. It's a program for the celebration of the innovations. And in this program, you know, every year the president of India, you know, uh, not only inaugurate this program, the, but the president interact with large number of, uh, the large number of uh, innovators. We organize a biennial competition, in fact, and our innovators receive the award by the hand of the president of president of India. Four school students, different, uh, you know, uh, one scheme ignite we had, in fact, uh, which was later merged with Inspire. And Dr. Kalam came every year to NIF, in fact, to give award to the school students. You're seeing many things are formal, many are informal. In fact, you see that in the the picture below, the president is, uh, you know, uh, he came out from the security and said that, no, I want to, you know, have more discussion with the school student uh, innovators. And it's a very informal kind of photograph here, you know. So these kind of things are, are necessary. And one more thing, in fact, like uh, NIF has, uh, uh, you know, recognized these uh, frugal and demand-driven innovations, in fact. But one thing we made, uh, you know, uh, we convinced to the people that the grassroots innovations matters, in fact, and they are also helpful in the GDP. You know, lots of resources you can take, in fact, and because of that, and, and the society is also accepting, because of that, uh, many movies were based on the stories of NIF, actually. You see the Padman. Padman was incubated by us. The Malaysian in Telugu, a 3 idiot was also based on the innovations of NIF. But one more thing we did, in fact, that is our the outcome of our work, that the grassroots innovations are a new category in a Padma Award. Every year, at least one or two people are getting award in this grassroots innovation category. And more than 10 people have, 12 people already received the Padma Sri by the hand of the president, uh, of India. So this is also the contribution of NIF, in fact. So this is what I, I was trying to convey that what institutions can do for the innovators. So this was about the innovation institution connect for, you know, the socioeconomic development or societal development or inclusive de development, whatever you would say. So my final thoughts are four, in fact, one is being an institution means a lot. You know, you are in the institution, 
a huge learning has to be there and it could be the best place to innovate you know nowadays the national education policy is there and uh, uh, you know it is uh, there to support all the innovations to provide the culture of innovations at the time after you were leaving an institution one could innovate with the lesson which you learned from here let's leverage, leverage institution that just give them to access for creating remarkable cooperation and in our country innovation by people find the right support from the institution and the government backed such institution to create a major impact thank you very much so this is the photograph of one of my book which was uh, released by our former president uh, uh, parna mukherjee ji in fact when it was the last day in his office and i'm happy that the prime minister and the present president with uh, the former uh, you know vice president was also there with uh, professor anil gupta and dr marshall kar thank you very much thank you sir for this very igniting talk now the session is open for question and answer i request all the participants to kindly raise their hand we would unmute you so that we you can directly post your queries to the speaker or otherwise you can also write your queries in the chat box we would relay those queries to the speaker on your behalf please any company may work any company may not work actually and uh, there are the failures of uh, various uh, uh, you know the companies including the startup companies and we try to find out that what are the reason whether it is the technology whether it is the money so nowadays lots of supports are there for <coughs> you know different uh, uh, you know startups but always in most of the cases the failures are because of inappropriate team so team which is not uh, complementary to each other in fact uh, end up sometime the in the in the failures of that startup sometime the we are too possessive to the technologies and we do not want to listen to the users in fact and because of that uh, you know the lots of uh, failures in the startups are there but your question is that what if a startup fail there has to be the learning you know so we should not be worry we should find out that what are the learning out of the failure of this startup so that those mistakes we should not commit in the future actually the learning is also equally important as the earning is thank you thank you sir next question next question good morning sir my name is taslim my question is that initially you talked about leaders so according to you what could be the possible qualities or what should a leader should possess the leader is someone in fact who can show the path to others and for that he should have the adequate experience in fact and for ex for experience you have to learn a lot for a student i would say that if a student is not reading 100 pages every day can not be the leader of future you know reading you know when we read 100 papers we can write not more than one paper okay so and we can speak, cannot speak for more than one minute actually so if you want to be the 
leader, you should have the content. You can have the content when you do have the knowledge. And you can have the knowledge when you have done the hard work. And you, poor student, the hard work is observing, reading, and experimenting. I think that is that is uh, uh, necessary for all the students. If you are not reading 100 pages every day, if you are not doing experiment, if you are not observing, good observer, you know, you are not going to be the good leader, in fact. But if you do have all these three qualities, take it from me, you are going to be a good leader. Thank you, sir. Good morning, sir. My name is Patan Mihi. And my question is, uh, what is the audacious license? Sorry, what is the? Audacious lies means. No, I missed your uh, question actually. You might be. What Please is... repeat your questions clearly. Or if you can also write, your, write them in the chat box. What is he saying? Yes, sir. That's what I asked him to, if he's not able to, uh, you know, say, he can write that in the chat box. You please write your question in the chat box. We would relate to the speaker. Hello, sir. I'm Kajal Bhatnai from PSC Microbiology at University Rajkot. And my question is that in future, what are the challenges faced in India? What are the challenges India has? What are the challenges faced by in India? You are you're asking about the challenges of India? Yeah. Okay, 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 fine. I got your question, in fact. See, our biggest problem is... The biggest problem are three, you know. One is size of the population. Second, the health of the population. And third is the social behavior of the population. If you would be able to control all these three, India has no challenge actually, because we do have large number of resources Definitely natural calamities, this and that can be there. But at this time, our biggest problem is the health, our population, and the social behavior. You know, the government is saying, Swach Bharat Abhiyan, okay? We should clean our country. But at, still, at many places, the country is not clean. It is not always the government will come and clean your house or outside your house. It is you. So... Those three things, in fact, uh, you know, has to be controlled. And for that, the policy can be there. But more than that, the learning can be there in your institutions. You know, many things cannot come with the policy. Many things comes with the culture. Many things comes with the, uh, you know, the behavior. But, sir, uh, we, uh, we are studying uh, Swachh Bharat mission in 2008, but uh, still not yet success uh, so much. That's why I'm saying that the social behavior is also equally important. If you, your family, your neighbors, you know, will decide that, okay, we'll make it success, you will make it success. If you, if it is in your mind that, oh no, it is the work of municipal corporation, they will come and clean my house, outside my house. Definitely it is not going to be. So if we'll not throw our garbage on the road, half of the road will clean, uh, you know, automatically. Problem is that we need to change behavior. We have to? Uh, we have to need to change our behavior. Absolutely. 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 We have to change our behavior. We have to keep control on our population. And we have to put more emphasis on our health. Now, you know, after COVID, uh, one thing is saying that uh, health has become the, uh, in, the, in the agenda of um, individual, in the family, and health also has became in the agenda of uh, the government 
earlier we were dependent on the junk food this and that whatever is tasty for us but nowadays people are bit conscious and they are at least they understand what is immunity and how to improve the immunity that is also the first step to enhance the uh, the health okay thank you sir thank you very much okay sir uh, i think the uh, uh, previous speaker what he actually mean, uh, meant to ask is what do you mean by audacious lies audacious lies yeah uh you know uh he he took it from my uh, you know that um, example i have i have seen share many time you know to make a show in fact uh, to create the hype in the society continuously you hide the data the factual information and uh, that factual information uh, hiding uh, you know create a big problem in fact it is not only you know in that case it was not only that the technology was not working in that case many medical decisions were taken based on the report of that uh, you know company so initially you think that okay minor hide in fact the data manipulation this and that will create uh, uh, you know not much problem but sometime you know they will land you behind behind the bar and they will spoil your company in fact and they, they will they will uh, you know uh, definitely your not good for your directors your for oh, for, for your you city know. your for your uh, you know the country okay uh, because of the paucity of time we'll just take one or two questions more uh, one more question has actually come in the chat box sir. that is what can you do to inculcate innovative thinking at school level hmm. absolutely uh, my more focus is there in fact and uh, the inspire program manak uh, was the outcome of that uh, in which we thought that uh, the students should give the ideas and those ideas what ideas they should give in fact what they are observing it is not that the, you will ask innovators to do the innovations absolutely no one will say that i don't have any innovation first you identify a problem first you sense the problem you identify that problem and try to address that problem and that solution may become the innovation of tomorrow so first step of innovation is identification of the problem so whenever we interact with the student we say that you know what problem they they do have around one thing came out very clearly in fact because few like innovations i have gone through in fact which students have given whether they were innovations or idea or whatever actually but one thing was very clear that the students the young students particularly the school students were not concerned about uh, uh, themselves much in fact they wanted to give solution to the society many time they were their solutions were for the elderly people sometime for the patient sometime for the you know differently abled people so one term came out in fact uh, very clearly samvedana se sarjan silta basically those students try to feel the pain of others as their pain and try to give some solutions and those solutions were the example of samvedana se sarjan silta which our former president uh, pranam mukherjee ji has uh, you know mentioned so here also they have seen something in fact they have sensed something so that has to be the first step and we have to teach students in fact to, to sense the pain to not live with the problem to be the solution of the uh, you know the the uh, not the part of the problem actually so if you will teach these three things to the students you will uh, inculcate the culture of uh, innovations among them okay one last question from the audience sir i am bopa kushi from the <coughs> department of bsc biotechnology i have question that uh, what role does uh, sustainability play in our company's overall strategic plan sustainability play in your sustainable play 
स्टेट व्हाट डिड यू से सस्टेनेबिलिटी प्ले रोल इन आवर ओवरऑल स्ट्रेटजिक प्लान सस्टेनेबिलिटी ऑफ व्हाट सस्टेनेबिलिटी इज ए ब्रॉड टर्म स्ट्रेटजिक प्लान कैन बी फॉर द सस्टेनेबिलिटी सस्टेनेबिलिटी कैन नॉट बी फॉर स्ट्रेटजिक प्लान so the sustainability is uh, you know uh, for a company let me share that uh, many things are there there has to be a good product okay the product has to be there at appropriate time but more than product it should reach to the people timely so supply chain also matters in fact if in in, in your strategy it is the product it is the quality control it is the supply chain and fourth factor is the affordability if these four factors are there then the sustainability of your company will be there okay okay thank you sir thank you very much sir for igniting the minds of the students towards innovation and entrepreneurship with your extremely inspiring engaging and reverberating talk just to reiterate some of the pearls of wisdom from your talk you have highlighted the socio economic challenges and opportunities you have very explicitly given the example of how you know big companies like facebook and google have originated through some innovative ideas you have also highlighted very beautifully the recent progress in the india's ecosystem and innovation also you have cautioned about the right planning and methods towards innovation otherwise the challenges and risk that are associated with it you have highlighted the different progress in the india's innovative ecosystem like manak the mou with amazon uh the innovation portal etc now i hand over the mic to dr abhishekta basu madam for the further proceedings thank you thank you very much thank you sir while thankfulness may consist merely of words gratitude is often shown in action as a token of our gratitude i would request our vice chancellor dr shiv tripathi to felicitate dr vipin kumar virtually on behalf of atmia university thank you thank you thank you very much thank you sir now i would request uh, dr apeksha patidia from the department of microbiology to introduce our second speaker of the day dr kabir j deshi Hello, everyone, and warm regards to all. With great pride and honor, I am here to introduce today's young, intelligent, and elegant guest of honor, as well as speaker, Dr. Kabir J. Udeshi, founder at Flycatcher Technology, Mumbai, Maharashtra. If one take a closer look at the academy of the achieving person, two distinct virtues pop up. besides perseverance and hard work these two pioneering and ground breaking virtues are intelligent technical skill and magnificent management skill with his enthusiasm for educational strengthening he enrolled and finished his tertiary education with degree of bachelor's in mechanical engineering and secured first class with distinction grade from university of pune and acquired masters in mechanical engineering from university of michigan 
He concluded his intellectual advancement with degree of doctorate from University of Michigan. Talking in brief regarding his work experience, he is a founder of Flycatcher Technology. His foundation is an epitome for in contributing for the improvement of quality in developing waste management. He is an inventor who loves getting his hands dirty and creating elegant systems. This highly trained engineer has developed system from micro to mega, some of which are being used in largest refineries throughout the world. He is a genius who talks, who takes challenges of processing waste by making his house zero waste in 2010. He is rather a vector in realizing the vision of sustainable future where every house and organization will process its solid waste into useful resource. Keeping into mind this vision, Today, he will be delivering and talk on journey of innovation towards sustainable development. So now I request Sir to further take over the session. Thank you for that lovely introduction. Uh, I just want to get an idea of how much time we have, because I know we're already late. Sir, you have 45 minutes. You may speak 40, 45 minutes. You have. Okay, okay. Lovely. Uh, so I'll keep it interactive. I'll keep more time for questions. Uh, yeah, sure, sir. Yeah. So we'll just start with a little bit about my journey so far. And uh, there were some good questions, I, you know, towards the last... Uh, bit of the uh, talk by the previous speaker and one was of course about failing and uh, I'd say uh, being an entrepreneur is all about failing. You fail continuously but then you pull yourself out and and come out of it. Uh, so yeah, that's part of the journey and part of figuring it out and it's, it's also uh, something that happens in everywhere like even you know throughout our lives for example, you know, before when we started learning how to walk, we fell a lot, right? So we have to fall to learn how to walk. And that, that's part of the learning process and it's part of life. So it's nothing to be scared of, something that will happen. And just I think we all have the strength, right, to overcome failure. So yeah, it's part of life. Okay. Uh, so I, I guess in the introduction, uh, I am talked about uh, my vision, right? So the vision is is to uh, ensure that we process all our waste with care, and uh, this is one of our systems that was inaugurated in uh, Panji in Goa, and uh, so this is how a modern waste management system that we've designed and developed looks like. Uh, it's so just so that you know, this is totally indigenous, okay? This is not anything that's uh, conceived of or, or developed anywhere else in the world. The whole technology, the design, the components, the manpower, the skills is all Indian, right? So it's something we can all be proud of. Uh, we've created something unique that we are pretty positive that the world will follow. Uh, and India is a pioneer in waste management. Uh, it doesn't, it's not evident right now, but it will be the future. Uh, so, like my past, you know, I I uh, did a lot of work with industries, uh, you know, chemical industries, refineries. Uh, in fact, uh, some of my work is at the Jamnagar refinery in not too far from Rajkot, I believe. Uh, so, uh, so when when I did that work, you know, one of the things I realized is a lot of these uh, chemical plants and you know are actually in somewhat damaging to the uh, local uh, environment and population and i didn't feel that i should continue supporting that kind of growth uh, and uh, so i said i you know i wanted to change path and do something that would be beneficial for every community and my country 
so a lot of the challenges we face as a society now is because of you know blind adoption of uh, what seems more sophisticated and advanced so one example is chemical fertilizers right uh, we know our country was totally organic and we shifted to that uh, and there is a place for it but again you know widespread and blind adoption actually creates more trouble so there are many instances like that and i guess we all have to think on our own as to what we are using and what we are doing is actually is, is it beneficial for all of us and uh, like i think there was a discussion that is about being sensitive what the society needs what our elders need right what we need what our future uh so the need to the process waste is there right you can look around you and there's a need right so that was enough inspiration for me i said this is this cannot go on and i wanted to do something about it and i started with my own house so uh, so yeah so currently what's happening is all our waste typically goes to a landfill and brings in you know disease to our cities to our communities and uh, we collect currently only collecting and transporting waste right to landfill while the vision that uh, that is there you know it's not only mine but community has and even luckily we have these wonderful uh, rules that are far ahead of their times like so we have solid waste rules formed by uh, citizens of india right thinkers of india we were saying that all the waste should be processed at source so at the point of generation so within your society within your university uh, and that's what we're doing so once waste is processed it actually brings about uh, you know creation of resource and and prevents a lot of diseases from coming into our lives so we uh, so what we're doing is we we are taking food waste and generating biogas and organic fertilizer with it right so that it's 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 used for uh, creation of or growing plants and vegetables and that again benefits our life so it's it uh, completes the loop and uh, so on one other thing that uh, is uh, it's known it's a fact right that our food waste is about 60 to 70% of our waste however if you look at solutions they all focus on plastic waste and and the reason is more that it's it's more economically uh, attractive right so the the biggest uh, challenges of food waste but very few people working on it that that's the reality of today uh I'll skip this okay so this is my journey right so the first uh, step was actually i started with composting and uh, which is again widely written and widely followed in the west uh, but uh, it didn't work for my own house so then i built this kind of uh, uh, digester so uh, for those of you in i guess this is a microbiology or audience so you understand right with the uh, anaerobic digestion we can uh, bacteria turn waste into uh, biogas and organic fertilizer So this was the first kind of digester I put up at my own house, and the goal was to make my own house zero waste. It wasn't necessary to start an enterprise, um, and uh, so this was the state of the art, right, at that time. And um, what I realized it wasn't a tool that could be deployed and employed by everybody, and there were certain challenges, like it it shut down in in the colder climate, and there were mosquitoes breeding. So the first step was to overcome this, right? So then. we made a smaller digester that was completely sealed and we reduced the size by five five times and uh, we did it with a very simple uh, change and which was again widely published in in papers that temperature has a very significant effect on bacterial growth so we just put a temperature control system and we could reduce the size by five times and of course we did some design changes that made it compact and uh, small right so then it was something that you can use in an apartment and as of today also i'm using uh, uh, you know more newer version of this one but the principle is the same and you can see the first version was all kinds of parts just stuck together put together uh, and but it proved the concept uh so then you know when i did did that some of my friends said they wanted the same something for their house so then my enterprise was actually uh, came about and i got a few clients right so uh, so we put these smaller digesters we call them dateco uh, 
which is frog in Gujarati, right? So uh, this digester has been running in Chennai, Mumbai, and in Baroda. Uh, so, but after this, when we deployed this, we realized we couldn't have a sustainable business. Uh, so the revenues and the number of people who are ready to process their own waste are very small, and they seem to be scattered. So then we kind of, uh, yeah, so these were some of my initial clients and we got great results, you know, with growing a pumpkin, growing flowers, right? Uh, but uh, the business was not sustainable. So then we said, okay, let's, uh, let's try larger digesters, right? And uh, we started some initial work on that. And uh, just uh, in time, we kind of got support from a BIRAC, which is a government organization that, that supports innovation and, and uh, new development. So they supported us and we came up with our, uh, the first digester. So, which is a larger one. This is, so this one is installed at a canteen in Mumbai. And the way it happened was, while this was being tested, uh, the gentleman on the right is the is the assistant commissioner in Mumbai. He found out about my work, and he said, "Why don't you do something for my canteen?" So I told him, "I'm testing it right at my workshop," and he said, "Why don't you test it at my canteen?" So the opportunity came, right? It was I almost pulled out of my workshop, and so uh, this digester was put uh, at at a municipal canteen. Uh, and it it did serve its function for a couple of years until we came up with a more refined version of this. Uh, so they, these digesters are still running at a club in Mumbai. And it was through that first deployment that we learned improvements and uh, came up with something that was a lot more reliable. And uh, yeah, so this, these digesters are still running. So these are about six, seven years old right now at, at a club in Mumbai. Uh, so that that club actually is frequented by a lot of film stars. Uh, for those of you who are interested, then we we came up with our patent and a and an even more uh, larger one. And, and uh, uh, you know you can see that uh, we made design changes. There's a stainless steel feed table. This is put at a hospital in Mumbai, and it is also completely in operation uh, until date. Uh, so so you know a lot of the learning was by doing and deploying putting in the field, understanding what happens, uh, and, and then refining the design. So as we do, we learn, and then we, we change, and again, we go and deploy. Uh, so yeah, this is, uh, so there's a lot of details into this, but in general, you can see by the visually, you can see things kept improving. And now we've also added our IoT interface, so we can monitor all our digesters online, uh, which actually is a fantastic tool for service. So again, this is uh, again this is a completely indigenously developed for our digester, and the biggest strength is my team. So people have come, joined, contributed. Uh, some people didn't continue, but everybody contributed, and some of them have stayed. Right. So now this is our team in Baroda. Uh, you can see it's grown, and then now we have a team in Goa as well, as well as Mumbai. So completely indigenous, right? Everything is indigenous. No. Uh, uh, so besides just the ICs, which are Chinese, everything is in, indigenous. And uh, so these are some photos of the of the fuel being used in canteens. So the biogas is again compressed and directly used in canteens, and uh, fertilizer goes to plants. So yeah, so that's the journey and uh, lots of learnings along the way. You have to keep learning. We're still learning. That never ends. And uh, yeah, so the goal was to do something that's beneficial and now we're just starting to make an impact. And in six months, we'll be doing about 30% of the waste in Panji city in Goa, right? So that is our focus area and we're creating, we have created quite an impact. Uh, and yeah, we have a lot of, we've had a lot of support, a lot of clients. So I think I'll stop talking there and, and take questions. Uh, that will be a better way to help out and uh, share my experience. Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, so now the session is open for the question and answers. Students, please raise hands and we will connect you to the speaker or you may write down your queries in the chat box. And you may ask in Hindi, Gujarati, whatever is comfortable. 
I I understand Gujarati also, but speaking a little bit hard for me. Yeah, sir. Yeah. Yes, yeah, students, please I request to either raise hand or write in the chat. So I think until students are getting prepared, uh, let me ask you a question. Uh, I would like to know uh, what were the troubleshootings or what were the troubles that you had faced initially while developing uh, this technology at your home house, actually. Because for I think house we need, uh, there may be space bias and all. So if like we want, what uh, what can we do? Yeah, so uh, lots of troubles, right? Troubles happen all the time. So the, you know, the moment you say, okay, I want to make something, the first thing is actually to come up with some kind of design, right? Uh, concept. So that was something I had experience in. So, you know, drawing up things was not too hard, right? So that's the first thing is to come up with a, some design. Now, the second thing is when you're starting up, right? Uh, we have to use ready parts as much as possible. You know, for example, uh, the initial digesters all had uh, were made of standard tanks. Uh, even the even the piping was something that we can go to the store and buy, right? So, uh, so finding the parts took time, right? So it's it was fun, right? But it was trouble. One way to look at it is trouble. Oh, I don't have parts. Let me go and find it. So going, going to the market, learning about the, what, are, what are the parts that are, that are available, putting it together, finding suppliers, right? So, so that was another thing is actually putting the parts together. Then deployment, you know, so everybody thinks you're mad. What is this? You know, this was in 2010 when there was no Swatch Bharat, there was no, you know, in, uh, focus towards innovation. And uh, even my neighbors were wondering, what is this guy doing? Taking his waist, putting it in here, right? So, so yeah, when you when you do that, you kind of maybe get made fun of. I don't know, <laughs> right? So, so all that happens. But uh, I guess I stuck to what I thought was important, right? And uh, and everything else came along. So, so yeah, putting the thing together, testing it, and then in, initially uh, there were a lot of failures, right? With the so parts breaking you know, figure out how to seal things. Uh, like I said, initially I started with composting of, of waste and, and you know, with our rice and dal enough and curries enough food, that really starts smelling. That was the first failure. Right? So there was a question about failure. That was the first failure, that this composting doesn't really fulfill my need. So then I went to anaerobic digestion. So then I got success. So then it was too big. Then I made it smaller. Right? So what are the things that I can do? Right, so uh, so yeah, that, that's how it goes. There are troubles all, all along the way. Okay, sir, thank you very much. We have one uh, hand raised. Good afternoon, sir. My name is Dhruvi Desai. Uh, my question is, uh, uh, semester seven six microbiology. My question is for brick support, MOU they made one compulsory normals. How to make this for UG students side as a uh, opportunity platforms? Sorry, I didn't get the question exactly. Sir, sir she is asking about the BIREC. Uh, BIREC support for she is asking about the BIREC support. Uh, uh, they have uh, any platform of uh, for U, uh, UG students? If they have any platform for startup, means sir, any MO, MOUs must be signed or what shall be done for students? 
Also, uh, I don't think BIRAC uh, stops anybody from applying for uh, for grants. Uh, they don't necessarily have a directly have an incubation center mm -hmm. for students, but they 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 support local uh, organizations. So, like in I know in Pune there is one incubation center called Venture Center, and in Gujarat. They, they, I think they do have, but if you if you go to the Bayrak website, you'll see uh, where are the different incubation centers in Gujarat. There are probably a couple of them. Uh, but uh, so Bayrak supports uh, these incubators who support students. And then suppose you have a idea, right, that you want to commercialize, right? So you have an idea, you've done some initial work, and uh, you want to. Uh, take that idea and and develop it further. You can directly apply for uh, uh, the pro. So there are different calls, different schemes. Uh, so the first funding we got was under a scheme called Sparsh, uh, which was uh, innovations for societal development. That was the theme. That Sparsh has a uh, you know some it's an acronym for something. Uh, so, so they have Sparsh. They have something called a biotechnology ignition grant. The two I know of, uh, but yeah, so you can even go to the Pyrac website directly and and uh, you, know, you can read the procedure and you just follow the procedure and uh, if, you know there'll be a initial if you submit a proposal there will be an initial uh, I guess evaluation and then they they call you for a presentation. So yeah, so Pyrac is very transparent, very professional. And uh, if you if you have something uh, that you want to develop, uh, I would uh, definitely encourage you to use that platform. Thank you, sir. We have one more question. Hello, sir. My name is Ash Parma. I am from Atmia University, B.S. in Microbiology. May may my my idea go classroom and case Improvement कर सकता हूँ और मैं कैसे लोगों को present कर सकता हूँ? Uh, आपका idea क्या है? थोड़ा बताएंगे तो मैं थोड़ा बेटा please uh, just elaborate your idea a little bit too sir मुझे माइक्रोबायोलॉजी के रिलेटेड कोई प्रोजेक्ट बनाना है तो उसे मैं कैसे क्लासरूम में इंप्लीमेंट कर सकता हूं ओके सो ही वांट टू मेक अ प्रोजेक्ट ऑन माइक्रोबायोलॉजी रिलेटेड कांसेप्ट सो हाउ कैन ही गो ऑन हां तो पहले तो आपको आपका आईडिया डिसाइड करना पड़ेगा राइट तो एक बार वो डिसाइड हो गया मुझे ये चीज बनाना है राइट कुछ तो जैसे हम बात कर रहे हैं कुछ तो जो आपको प्रॉब्लम लग रहा है या जिसका सलूशन आप प्रोवाइड कर रहे हो वो एक पहला पकड़ना पड़ेगा कि क्या है और उसका सलूशन माइक्रोबायोलॉजी में है क्या राइट तो वो वो आपके अंदर से ही आएगा वो कोई किताब से नहीं आएगा आइडिया यानी आप आपका खुद का आइडिया किसी और का आइडिया है तो वो और यानी उसका आइडिया हो गया राइट तो आपका क्या आइडिया है वो पहला है फिर उसको फिर उसको लैब स्केल पे कैसे करना यानी पहले वो आइडिया के ऊपर डिपेंडेंट है राइट तो जैसे मेरे मेरे लिए वेस्ट मैनेजमेंट का आइडिया था तो मैंने वेस्ट के साथ ट्रायल लिए अभी आ, आपका आइडिया के ऊपर है कि आप माइक्रोबायोलॉजी कैसे यूज करना चाहते हो वो मे बी हो सकता है कि कोई ड्रग के लिए या कुछ अलग बहुत सारे एप्लीकेशन है माइक्रोबायोलॉजी के तो आपको आइडेंटिफाई करना पड़ेगा कि ये एक चीज है जो मुझे सॉल्व करना है और उसका कुछ सोल्यूशन माइक्रोबायोलॉजी से आ जाएगा तो उसको यूज करो जैसे हमारा जो प्रोडक्ट है ना अल्टीमेटली उसमें सब कुछ यूज होता है माइक्रोबायोलॉजी मैकेनिकल इंजीनियरिंग इलेक्ट्रिकल इंजीनियरिंग सॉफ्टवेयर इंजीनियरिंग सब कुछ आ जाता है लेकिन एक एक चीज करके आप पढ़ सकते हो Yeah, next. Good morning, sir. Uh, myself, Mehta Feni from BSc Microsciences, Atmia University. 
My question is, sir, if, if I'm having some idea or something, how can I raise the fund? As a being a UG student, how will I get funding? Is there any funding supporting bodies? Yeah, so from my experience I've I've been through, I've first started working on it. See, what I've always seen to start working on an idea, you don't need funds. For example, you have stuff around you, right? Like, uh, I, I don't know what your idea is. Again, it's to just decide. And you have stuff around the house, in the university. So uh, I'm sure you're, uh, you know, if you have, if you want to do some tests in the lab, right, you have so much equipment in the lab already. So you can, I'm sure your professors will allow you to, if you, if you ask them and say, look, I want to do this experiment, they'll guide you, right? So, so all those resources are available to you. Your mind is available to you, right? So initially you don't really need funds, right? You may not even need funds. So just start working on it and then you'll get a feel of how, you know, whether it works, it doesn't work, right? And, and do a little bit of refinement. Then once you get a better feel and, and you, may need okay now i can't do this with you know within my university or at my house or you know even sometimes even a company will be ready to help you out there are a lot of people uh, who help me out right so they say use my lab use my electronics so they've helped me out you know companies uh, so you'll get help that way and then uh, once you get to the stage where you know you need your own space or you need some special equipment uh, you know all these i guess one of them i mentioned was Bayrak innovation foundation so then you can approach them and you will definitely get support. So support always comes at the right time. I, I think it's always better to start working and the support will come rather than wait for support. And then you will say, I'll start working. It's actually the reverse. Uh, did it make sense? So start working, the support will come. Don't worry about it. It will come at the right time. Thank you. Yeah. Uh... Any queries, student? Sir, sir, if we have fund, how do we raise the prototype? What do we want to make? Biofertilizer. अच्छा बायो फर्टिलाइजर कैसे किस किससे बनाएंगे आप मुझे बताएंगे कहां से शुरू करोगे माइक्रो ऑर्गेनिजम्स की हेल्प से ओके और लेकिन माइक्रो ऑर्गेनिजम किस किस पे काम करेंगे फंजन सॉरी फंजन सर फंगस फंगस ओके ओके फंगस और फंगस यानी फंगस यानी अगर किस चीज पे काम करेंगे यानी कुछ कुछ उसका फीड चाहिए राइट फंगस किस चीज पे ग्रो करना पड़ेगा राइट हम इटा सर पूछ रहे हैं कि व्हाट विल यू टेक टू ग्रो द फंगस एक्चुअली सर वांट्स टू आस्क यू दैट राइट सर मीडिया इन द लैब मीडिया चाहिए राइट तो वो अवेलेबल है आपके पास मीडिया यस यस आपके पास लैबोरेटरी अवेलेबल है कॉलेज में यस टीचर्स अवेलेबल है गाइड करने को यस हाँ फंगस कहाँ से आएंगे आइसोलेट करनी पड़ेगी हाँ वो तो है ही ना सब जगह है अवेलेबल है राइट यस तो आपके इनिशियल एक्सपेरिमेंट्स के लिए कुछ भी फर्निश चाहिए कि सब कुछ अवेलेबल है। ओके सर। समझ गए? ये आप शुरू करोगे तो आपने आप सब कुछ है तो उससे थोड़ा आपका रिजल्ट आएगा कि इससे क्या हो रहा है फंगस से उसका रिजल्ट कैसा है फिर मे बी नेक्स्ट स्टेप के लिए मे बी दो चार पांच दस स्टेप के लिए आपके सब कुछ अवेलेबल रहेगा और okay, मैं आप, आपको गारंटी दे रहा हूं अगर आपको जैसे आप एक बार शुरू करोगे ना काम तो हेल्प अपने आप आ जाएगा आपको कई 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 बार कुछ चाहिए किसी के पास ऐसे ही दे देते हैं लोग ले लो तुम ये कर रहे हो अच्छा है अपना आजू बाजू लोग बहुत अच्छे हैं राइट अगर वही बोल रहा हूँ इंडस्ट्री भी हेल्प करती है शॉपकीपर्स भी हेल्प करते हैं और आपको बहुत बहुत सारी चीजें आजू बाजू ही मिल जाएंगी थैंक यू सर गुड 
Yeah, next, any queries? Students, please raise your hands so that we can unmute you if you have any queries. Okay, sir. So, so uh, I just have a last question for you. Uh, sir, I wanted to know that which type of a mindset should a person or a student have to become an, an either an entrepreneur or to go through this journey that you have? Uh, so, uh, I think it's about dropping a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> so, you, for example, you know, when your hands are full, you can't pick up more, right? Uh, so, it's yeah. about dropping what you know and just taking the plunge. For example, you know, to swim in water, you have to just jump off, right? Into the water at some point. <laughs> then you learn. So, the same way, you have to jump, jump into it 100%. And uh, I know that there is a lot of questions, a lot of doubts. Uh, a lot of fear, right? That happens with it. Uh, but but you know this this fear happens all the time. Like if you you know as an entrepreneur you take it on, but you know even if you take a job, there's always some sometimes an insecurity there. So it's 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 a it, it's part of life. So yeah, I think the mindset is just to be open to go for it, do it, have faith. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay, sir. Uh, so, uh, if no queries, then I would like to take the opportunity to thank you, sir, for your steering words and gracing our seminar with highly interactive and mind-provoking talk. It has really invigorated all our spirits and enlightened our mind thought process. Your talk has worked as a starting point to resolve important issues in the area and inspired many to take individual initiative. Your story from zero waste house till now is really amazing. And if all the waste of our country can be utilized this way, we may surely be in the root of real success and may write many successful stories like one of yours. So thank you once again, sir. Now I hand over the session to Dr. Abhishekta Basu for the further proceedings. Thank you, ma'am. On behalf of Atmia University, I request our Vice Chancellor, Dr. Shiv Tripathi, to felicitate Dr. Kabir J. Gudeshi virtually as a token of our gratitude. I wholeheartedly thank all the dignitaries, delegates, faculty members, and participants for your active participation in EVACAN. Dear participants, I have two announcements for you. First, to receive your certificates, kindly fill in the feedback form of EVACAN. The link will be shared to you in your emails, and you will have just 30 minutes to submit your responses. Second, to navigate to the correct location of today's events at the scheduled time, kindly refer to the events itinerary provided to you. On behalf of the entire Atmia team, I wish all the participants the very best of luck. Hope you will enjoy all the deliberations and the programs. With this, we are winding up the EVACAN session of the National Symposium. Thank you all for your valuable time and have a good day.